Hello and welcome to the wonderful world of English language classroom. Learners of class 11, today we will do the lesson 5 from your English language textbook Hornbill, The Ailing Planet, The Green Movement's Role by Nani Balkiwala. Learners with you is me or Meganathan from Department of Education in Languages and Krithi from the same department. We will together, we will read the text, understand the text and interpret it through various activities. Okay, let me ask you Kriti. Yes, sir. There are lots of talk about environment concern today. Do you think that is it is necessary or it is simply exaggerated? No, sir. I think it is absolutely necessary because the uh, environment we are living in right now has been deteriorating continuously and uh, we can see the effects in our surroundings as well. Fine, fine. I think learners will uh, agree with that. Okay, before we move on to understand the text by Nani Palkiwala, let us look at the title, The Ailing Planet, The Green Movement's Role. Yes, sir. There are two things. One is something is ailing. Which is ailing? The planet is ailing. The, the planet Earth. The planet Earth is ailing. We are not bothered much about it. The second is the green movement's role. Let us look at the title. So, there were people who woke up to this and that movement is called green movement. Our learners and Kriti, this was an article published in the Indian Express in 1994 and Balkiwala is concer was concerned about how the planet is being exploited, disturbed, degraded by humans and he wrote it 20 years ago, 1994, that means 2004 and 2014, now more than 25 years. So, that is one. Before we move on to read the lesson through the summary, interpret it and do activities, let us watch some of the visuals which are just happening uh, in America and which happened in Australia last year and which happened in August 2020 in Kerala and in Himachal, Uttaranchal. These are the images. It may be slightly disturbing uh, you learners, uh, but we need to understand and watch it. Here are the, some of them are from California fire, which is now ravaging currently. Then some of them are from Australia last year. They took lot of time to put it out. Then this Kerala landslide in Idiki killed more than 100 people, buried the, the workers, the laborers buried in the mud because of that excessive rain, the hills could not hold. So, the mud slided. So, this is what. We have given you these images with some purpose because in the text, Nani Palkiwala is going to tell us something serious. Come on, let us understand. Kriti, how are the images? So, the images look very horrific and the destruction which has been made must have been very dangerous to the people around that uh, area. Fine. Okay. Come on. I am going, going to stop you, but with the, the horror is not stopping. Learners, I am not scaring you, but this is the reality. Come on. Watch this video, a very short video on Kerala landslide. dangerous uh, scenarios for the human as well. Kriti, can also tell me why is nature so furious? Sir, it is because we are not taking care of nature uh, like we are supposed to do. Can we do something to stop it? Sir, there are various ways we can stop this. One of the most important ways by planting more and more trees. Okay. How? This is what Palkiwala is suggesting us through his article 25 years ago. This is what Palkiwala is suggesting us 25 years ago, how we can overcome some of the problems. So, learners, here is the subtext, the summary for you. Kriti will start. Come on, let us tell them the what Nani Palkiwala wants to tell us. Come on. Sure, mm. sir. Mm. So, let us understand the text. 
Manu Paltiwala brings to our knowledge about the movement that gripped the imagination of the entire human race. In 1972, the world's first nationwide Green Party was found in New Zealand. The shift from mechanistic view to a holistic and ecological view of the world was felt. Fine. Okay. Let me ask you. You said gripped the imagination of the entire human race. Yes. So not many things affect the entire imagination of the entire world. So this is what was that in New Zealand, 1972. The Green Movement uh, Party was Found. founded. Yes. Okay. They found a party called Green Party, political party. That means there was a concern for people around the world to uh, to protect the, this one. Then what happened? The shift from mechanistic view to a holistic ah, and ecological that, view. That is the thing. Uh, learners, what is mechanistic view? I will look at it. Oh, this is happening here and there. It might, might, it's not a big deal. But people started looking at holistically. holistically. Then this is what Palkiwala is telling us. Someone look at it. Hmm. Then what did what we did was the shift is as revolutionary as that introduced by Copernicus who proved that earth and other planets revolved around the sun. So, it is as big as uh, when Copernicus found, oh, earth is revolving around the sun. Then the world started realizing that earth's vital signs reveal a patient is in the declining health. Who is the patient? Earth. Earth, the planet earth. So, when we observed all around the world and the data from agriculture, um, forestry, uh, fishery and um, industry proved, oh, someone is ailing. Who is ailing? The very planet with in which you are living. The concept of sustainable development was popularized in 1987 by the World Commission on Environment. So, some of the things, the entire world wakes up. So, 1987, the idea called sustainable development. Okay, let us see what is sustainable development. Come on, Kriti, to continue. The commission defined the ideas as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. No, I do not understand what, what, what you are reading. So, I am putting it, you correct me if yes. I am wrong. Yes. You have lot of things to uh, resources, but keep it for the future. future. So, learners, when you eat something, when you keep the tap open unnecessarily, imagine that you are robbing off, stealing from your children, your grandchildren. So, you have to keep it for the future generation. generation. Then? Yes. This means Palkiwala explains, without stripping the natural world of resources, future generation would be. So, you do not, the, the word used is stripping off, you do not just snatch away the natural resources, uh, natural resources which is meant for the future, yes. for future generation. Then there is very nice uh, example uh, Pal Palkiwala is giving. What is that? Come on, look at it. In the zoo at Lusaka, Zambia, there is a cage where the natives read the world's most dangerous animal. Inside the cage, there is no animal but a mirror where you see yourself. Fine. What does it mean? In Zambia, yes. in Lusaka, there is a zoo in which uh, you can see all other uh, all other rooms there are other animals in the particular room there is a big mirror and that most dangerous animal, animal of the world and if you go and see you yes. can see yourself that means the humans are the most, most dangerous, dangerous animal. animal and sometimes uh, uh, my uh, user, teacher used to say dog does its job tiger does its job monkey does its job elephant does its job but only humans do all others all job others, yes. and snatch away others food. Yes. So, we have to be careful learners, this is a figurative kind of uh, story to, to uh, for us to remind whenever uh, we consume something, are we doing it excess, we have to do that. Come on. Then Brandt Commission, which dealt inter alia among other things with the question of ecology and environment raised the question. Are we to leave our successors a scorched planet of advancing deserts, impoverished landscape and an ailing environment? This is what a commission headed by Brandt, which raised a question, 
are we to live our successes means are we to live our sons and daughters grand grandsons and daughters a scorched planet of advancing deserts impoverished landscapes and ailing environment so this tells us all come on kirti yes sir mm. the global economic prospects by mr lester r brown points out that the earth's four biological systems fisheries forests grasslands and croplands form the foundation of the global economic system okay it's very very nicely he said uh, what are the things the biological system biological that is means the sea related water related fisheries forest from where we get the resources wood everything then grasslands from where you get first of all oxygen uh, other things uh, then crop plants where get vegetables rice wheat etc etc these four major aspects form the foundation of all the economic activity and these all four are exploited come on mm. in addition to supplying our food these four systems provide virtually all the raw materials for industry except minerals and petroleum driven synthetic okay what this four what are the four fisheries fisheries hmm. forests hmm. grasslands and croplands these not only give food they also give raw materials for industry except some of the industries run by petroleum and petroleum. synthetics so this all major resources uh, source for resources are essential unfortunately they are damaged okay now palkiwala is further regretting something happens in large parts of the world human claims these systems are reaching an unsustainable level a point where their productivity is being impaired meaning large part of the world these four sectors the four domains of source for resources claimed by humans we are claimed here he says that exploited by humans to that extent that we can't sustain them in poor countries forests are being decimated in order to produce firewood for cooking 1994 still majority of the world population use use wood for cooking so forests are getting decimated several species of life face extinction as a result of this destruction not only this this california fire has uh, no australia fire has uh, eliminated they say that uh, more than um, uh, 40000 animals yes sir even so amazon forest fire has affected drastically on the flora and fauna so yes true so what to do with that come on Pal palkiwala is not so uh, pessimistic and desperate that there is a way to protect it come on world resources institute says we were saying that we are losing the forest at an acre a second but it is much closer to an acre and a half to a second okay every second or we, uh, uh, we are losing one acre one, and half one of one the half forest half. imagine yes. learners this is very dangerous then what what does the indian constitution say hmm. article 48a of the constitution of india provides that states shall endeavor to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard the forest and wildlife of the country so constitution says everybody should be protected for forest forest should be protected but what actually happens palkiwala regrets laws are never respected nor enforced in india he is so he is a uh, jurist he is a lawyer palkiwala further says the parliament the parliament's estimate committee highlighted the near catastrophic depletion of india's forest over the last four decades last four decades he meant up till 1990 that means uh, 80s 70s 60s after that 25 more uh, more 25 years more passed you know how much we have got depleted large areas officially designated as forest land are already virtually treeless so you will say the area may be designated as forest but there is no tree So, the world population growth was one billion in nineteenth century. By nineteen hundred, that is twentieth century, 
it was second billion reach that means 2 billion was added in the 20th century, but in the at the end of the 20th century 3.7 billion people that is almost the world population today is 5.7 billion. So, the, the burden of more and more people also one of the reasons for environmental degradation. Okay, now, go ahead. Hmm. Fertility falls as income rise, education spreads and health increases. So, it is the universal uh, truth now economically, socially, politically. If uh, people are educated, they get less number of children, then more health facilities, better education. The welfare economists like uh, Amartya Sen, Keynes, they advocated uh, adopt family planning, reduce po po population, then give good education, you will not worry about other things. Come on. Hmm. Paltiwala says development is the best contraceptive. Rich get richer and the poor beget children which condemn them to remain poor. Fine. That is what uh, Paltiwala is vehement, no? very, very, very what is it? severe and he says that development, you will have to develop. What can develop you? What can progress you? That is education and good health and economic security. So, development is the contraceptive. People are uh, well educated, they will not get unnecessarily get more children, more than the required norm. Population of India is 920 million, which is more than the entire population of Africa and South America. Uh, and this is what uh, the population was in 1994. Now, we have crossed that 1 billion mark. Now, I am going to stop it here, okay, going to show uh, the learners, uh, bef we continue the summary, uh, learners one video of devastating war. Come on, let us watch it, short video. is also now happening. So, war is also damaged, yes, the war is also damaging. Even in 21st century 2020, the world is fighting without knowing in some other wars, most of the wars, why we are fighting and with whom we are fighting. So, come on, let us continue the lesson, uh, the summary. Go ahead. Hmm. For the first time in human history, we see a transcendent concern survival not just of the people, but of the planet. Okay. What does it mean? So, that means that we do not we not only have to uh, make the environment worthy for us, but we have to take care of the planet as a whole. Whole. So, not only humans are suffering, the whole, the whole planet, planet is, is suffering. suffering. Yes, sir. Then? The environmental problem does not necessarily signal our demise, it is our passport for the future. So, so, some, some, some very, very, very deep statement, yes, profound sir. statement. Yes, so, it is not that you will go away, you will be destroyed, but your future will not be fine, means you will be suffering with uh, degraded resources, pollution, polluted life, come on. So, what, what, what it leads to? If you want good passport to the good future, he says an era of responsibility. Yes, what is the era of responsibility? Era of responsibility, a holistic view, an ecological view, seeing the world as an integrated whole rather than a disassociated selection of parts. So, everyone today has the responsibility, whether it is American president, the Indian prime minister, or a worker in the uh, municipal corporation office or in the village agriculture farmer, everybody should take up the responsibility. That is what it is the era of the responsibility. Look at see whatever happens somewhere in Mississippi or Amazon or in the corner of Tamil Nadu and Jammu Kashmir environmentally would actually affect someone else living in some other part of the world. So, we have to take up the responsibility, how it happens. Industry has a most crucial role to play in the new era of responsibility. 
industries are the first and foremost people who should actually come forward to reduce pollution, take up the responsibility. So, what kind of example Palkiwala gives? Come on. The chairman of DuPont, Mr. Edgar S. Goulard, who declared himself to be the company's chief environmental officer. Instead of chief, chief executive, executive officer. officer. So, if uh, uh, chairpersons, managing directors and CEOs of industrial units become chief environmental officer rather than chief executive officer, then things will improve. We know that uh, there are lots of problems in the mining industry. Margaret Thatcher once said, no generation has a freehold on earth, all we have is a life of tenancy. A very powerful statement. Uh, yeah. They are full repairing leave, meaning you go to a place and you live in, uh, in a hired uh, rented house. Then the same way we all living on earth as a rented house, when you when we leave some owners what they say, when you leave the house you should repair it everything, whitewash it and give it back to me the way I gave it to you. So, we humans have the responsibility that is you should all take mm, care of uh, the earth, care. not pollute it the way you came to the earth, give it to your children the way you, you inherited it. Right. Then there is something more. In the words of Mr. Lester Brown, an author, he says, we have not inherited this earth from our forefathers, we have borrowed it from our children. So, all of us think, oh, this is my house, this is my, my, my place, I can buy as many as uh, uh, vehicle possible, mean cars possible. No, you have not inherited this as a gift from your parents, you have borrowed it from, from your children. So, mind you, that is what Nani Palkiwala. Learners, let me ask you some basic questions to understand the story, the lesson and Kriti, yes, come on, answer it. Some words and phrases you locate from the text, which the author signifies refer to the ailing planet. One is? So, because of the degrading health of earth, he is calling the planet earth a patient. A patient. Yes. Sir. Yes, then? And he also talks about the sustainable development. Mm. You, unless otherwise yes. you protect it, you are going to destroy yourself. Now, it is not not only you are suffering, the entire thing called earth is suffering. Yes. Then? And sir, he also talks about how uh, from materialistic things, we have to holistically think about the planet earth. Okay. Otherwise, the patient will be in trouble. Yes. Okay. Who, who is the, he gives a nice uh, incident uh, of the, what is it, uh, zoo he visited, yes, sir. then world's most dangerous animal. Who is the most dangerous the, animal? It is definitely us humans, because we are constantly continuously degrading our environment we live in. Very good, very good. How are the earth's principal biological system being depleted? So, if we talk about the four uh, principal biological systems that are fisheries, forests and croplands and grasslands, uh, we see a lot of pollution uh, has been happening in all of these uh, and biological systems. There are two things, they are giving food to humans yes. and also they are contribute to industries also. Yes. How does the growth of population uh, contribute to the environmental degradation? So, uh, he says that we have to control the population and uh, to do that, he says that if a lot of children or a lot of people are there in the environment, that does not mean that we have more people to work, but that means that we have less amount of food to provide to them or less amount of jobs to give them. Fine, great, great. Learners, United Nations came forward with the extensive consultation with the countries, Millennium Development Goals. There are eight goals, let us understand why they are important. Millennium Development Goals. Number one, eradicate extreme poverty and hunger. People won't be responsible because they don't get food to eat. How can you expect them to be responsible? So, eradicate poverty from this planet. Come on, that is the first millennium goal. Come on. Number two, achieve universal primary education. India has right to education act. Every child should 
be in school up to class 8th now with the new education policy 2020 all children up to class 10 12 will be in school no child will be left out of the school so education is the second millennium goal uh, we should be achieving by 2025 or something yeah third one mm. Gender equality and empower women. Okay. As long as women are treated equal, equal participation in our lives, society, then the world will be a better place. That is the third millennium goal. Yeah. Number four, reduce child mortality. Even today, children before the age of 10 die of some seasonal disease, some infectious disease. This should be stopped. Uh, if 100 children are born, not a single child should die because of this kind of preventable contagious diseases. So, this is the fourth goal, come on. Number 5, improve maternal health. So, when the mother who is pregnant, conceived, is protected well, eats nutritious food and fine, the child will be healthier. And what is the sixth millennium goal? Combat HIV or AIDS. Malaria and other diseases. Okay. Some of the diseases are threatening the world time and again. AIDS was one of them. It was a killer disease. So, that was one of the reasons this was included. Uh, learners, we are in uh, uh, that, uh, September, last six months, what is uh, what has been happening? We know uh, a virus is threatening the world. So, this is one of the millennium goals to eradicate, fight against find medicine, cure such diseases so that people live peacefully. Come on, what is the seventh one? Ensure environmental sustainability. Yeah, this is directly related to what Nani Palkiwala wants us, wanted us to do. Pro protect the environment, this is one of the goals and uh, do not use plastic, these, that, all those laws were brought in. Come on, what is the eighth one, the last one, Millennium Development Goal? A global partnership for development. Ah. See, one country, one person, one institution cannot work alone in isolation to protect the environment because it is it's everybody. So, institutions and individuals, countries have to come together. This is also one of the working together is the major thing. Let us also think how we can sustain this earth, sustain humanity, okay. sustain industries, institutions, languages. So, United Nations development program came out with, here are the sustainable development goals for you learners. Come on, Kriti is reading out for you. Come on. Hmm. Number 1, no poverty. Number 2, zero hunger. Hmm. Number 3, good health and well being. Number 4, quality education. Number 5, gender equality. Number 6, clean water and sanitization. Number 7, affordable and clean energy. Number 8, decent work and economic growth. Number 9, industry, innovation and infrastructure. Number 10, reduce inequalities. Number 11, sustainable cities and communities. Number 12, responsible consumption and production. Okay, responsible consumption and production. So, not only uh, eating, but also you have to produce. Come on. Number 13, climate action. Number 14, life below water. Number 15, life on land. Okay, life below water, we have to take care of seas, water bodies and also the earth. Come on, that life on water. Come on, here are the two more, last two. Number 16, peace, justice and strong institutions. Hmm. Number 17, partnership for the goal. Okay, we need to develop good schools, strong schools, universities, uh, institutions, courts, uh, industries, so that the world sustains intellectually also strong and not only that, the last goal is coming together and working together. Let us close the part one with Mahatma Gandhi's quote, the earth has all you need, but not all you greed. That means, the earth has all the uh, earth can fulfill all your needs, but not your not greed. greed. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Kriti, thank for you, active sir. participation. Thank you, learners.